Yeah. Okay, it's um, 5.30, so I'm going to call the meeting to order. Are we recording? Yes. All right, good. So um, this is the work session meeting for December 5th for the City Council of Minatrista. Um, present this evening, our city clerk, Don Modsko, Director of Public Works is Gary Peters. Council present is Kathleen Refkin, um, Ann McGregor, Pam Mortensen. John Chemperlin is absent this evening. Um, I'm Lisa Whalen. I'm the mayor. And also with us staff is Jasper Krugel, city administrator, Brian Grimm, our finance director, and David Abel, who is our community development director. We have two items on our agenda. Our first item is Parks and Planning Commission interviews. We'll be doing the interviews, and then afterwards we'll be discussing it, um, probably coming to a decision at the, at the work session, and then we'll be making the um, actual appointment at a regular meeting at, after 7 o'clock. So with that, um, we're going to start out with interviews. Uh, anything, do you care to say anything first? The only thing uh, worth noting is this afternoon we did get a, a phone call and then followed up with an email. One of the applicants um, for the Parks Commission did withdraw their application upon um, some some personal things that they're going through. So uh, Trisha Jo, uh, the, that application, she has withdrawn her application. She w might be interested in the future, but just the timing right now isn't right for her. So I just want one thing of note okay. for the uh, council, just to, in case not everyone saw that. All right, thank you. So with that, we'll start with, um, we're just gonna go down the ones that are in our packet first and second, so on. Heather Charles, you're the first one. So welcome. Uh, we'll try and go easy on you. Um, <laughs> there's just a couple questions that we're going to ask. Um, first of all, um, describe, uh, you can tell us a little bit about yourself and then describe your past experience dealing with or participating in local government. Okay. Um, well, my back, I'm retired now. I've been retired for a few years now, and so I've had enough rest. I'm ready to get back into it. <laughs> Um, and I was, uh, I spent my entire career in the business world, and um, for the last several years I was director for a national food broker for the Midwest and uh, managed all the natural business there. So that brings, you know, uh, I have a lot of experience in putting together teams, consulting with national and international brands. Um, and looking at their go-to-market plans and advising them, and then uh, you know put the teams on it and make it successful. So a lot of that involves being able to you know I can read a spreadsheet, I know how to do budgeting, I had to budget for my region, um, and uh, I'm good at cost-benefit analysis as well. That was that was a lot of you know looking at a spend and you know what were we going to get back from that spend. So, and I'm very outcome oriented <coughs> as well, and I'm also very much a 360 person. So when something is presented to me, I try to look at it from every angle, talk to people, if it's an angle I don't feel like I have it, and I think all of that would be really useful um, for planning, for city planning. And I've thought about this for years, but my job involved a lot of travel. And so I just thought, oh, sweet time I'm retired, and maybe you'll want me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then um, in what ways do you think, this? you've kind of answered it, but if there's anything else you want to add to it, in what ways do you think you can make a positive contribution to the commission? Yeah. Well, I, I think, you know, one of my strong suits is cost-benefit analysis, and and in something like this, like in government and in planning, where you're affecting people's everyday lives, that's part of cost benefit, absolutely. You know, because city government is, is the level of government that makes a difference in people's lives, for the good or for the ill. You know, it depends on, you know, what's going on and, and uh, you know how well run the city is. And I think interest is very well run. I mean, my experience over almost 30 years that I've lived here, it's just been really good every time. Every time I've had to interact, whether it's been with the public safety department. Um, first time I called them, I'd only been on here for a couple years, 
I'd only bought my house for that. I'd been renting a house for several years in the city. Um, <clears throat> but a, uh, a rock had broken the driver's side window. And I'm like, why am I like out here in the middle of nowhere? <laughs> How did this happen? I mean, it just seemed pretty crazy. And um, so I called, called the police. They were right out, took the report, and then I told my neighbor, and then he thought about for a couple of days, and then he came back and he says, you know what, I think my snowboarder threw a rock <laughs> through your window. So I called the police department and I said, it wasn't theft, it wasn't vandalism, <laughs> it, was, it was my neighbor's snowblower. So, um, you know, and I have been a national night out organizer for probably about a dozen years, and when we had a little had a spat of petty theft that um, got to the point of actually home invasion with someone who worked at home and didn't know his home. So I organized a um, neighborhood watch for the neighborhood, and the crime stopped like that because I was pretty sure it was a kid in the neighborhood that was having problems and acting out. And um, my theory is that I think that's what it was. And when we organized my Talked to every single person in the neighborhood and door to door. Um, and we all exchanged phone numbers and I worked with the police department on that, setting it up and everything. And uh, so those are some of my interactions. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, the 2040 comprehensive plan, mm -hmm. um, did you read any of it? Yeah. Okay. I read a good piece of it. Good. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, and, and it's uh, easy to see. There was a lot of work that went into that, you know, for the city to put that together. And um, what I've heard, what I've heard uh, said from you guys is that it's, you know, it's not set in concrete, that it's meant as a guide, and that there, there is flex in it when there needs to be and when we have to ask for it, when we have mm -hmm. to, you know, um, right. You know, part of that I think is probably pressure from the Metropolitan Council on development. That's where I, that's where I, I see the point of tension in the twenty forty plan. Okay. Heather, out of curiosity, how long have you lived in Minna Trista? Uh, almost thirty years. Yeah, okay. I lived over in Minneapolis Avenue. Mm -hmm. I rented a house over there for <coughs> eight years, nine years. Okay. Yeah, and then I had to move into Minneapolis for a little bit. And couldn't wait to get out of there. So <laughs> <laughs> we got things taken care of. But I went to West Bloomington. I, you know, it was a very nice area. It was right in the river. And I just said, mm, no, not the same. And so I just told to my realtor boyfriend, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm leaving you, but please find me a house in Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? With that, um, you can stay if you'd like. And um. You can or I can. Who's who's next? So what like like I said before, what we'll do is we'll discuss this after every all the interviews and we'll kind of make a determination here and then it'll go to our regular council meeting yeah. for a, a formal vote. I think for their comfort's sake, I, I won't sit in. That's fine. You know, That's I don't fine. Think they would feel a little more yep. Yep. Kelly uh, Phillips. Mark Mark. Mark. Oh. Lisa. Awkward. Well, okay. <laughs> oh, Mark, okay. For, you're, we're talking planning, so. Yeah, we're still going down the list. Now. We're just going to order the received. Yep, okay. Or, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, okay. I figure we'll group all the planning together and then okay. go to the All right, sounds good. So, good evening. Um, as I explained to uh, Heather earlier, <clears throat> so we're going to do the interviews. And then uh, there's a couple of questions we have for you. And then um, after that, we're going to be discussing and we'll make a determination here. And it'll go back to our um, 7 o'clock meeting at our regular council meeting. And that's where we'll be taking the actual vote. And you're welcome to stay for that meeting as well. Um, so I'm going to go back to our questions. And you can start out um, with... Uh, giving us any kind of background you'd like, and then describe your past experience dealing with or participating um, in local government. Uh, for 25 plus years, I've worked for AT&T, so I have a strong telecom background. Um, I've worked with numerous cities, municipalities, 
things of that sort, where we've done road construction projects, infrastructure projects, things like that. Um, and that's kind of, I guess, what I bring to the table is that side of the industry. That's where my expertise is. Um, and that would kind of be my focus, I guess. But I, I've heard from people, I've only lived here in Minna Tristan now for a year and a half. I'm from Southern California a year and a half ago. Um, and I've heard from a lot of people that internet is a huge issue out in this area, um, in the Woodland Cove area, is where I live. A lot of people have brought that up as a concern. And that's something I think I could kind of help address with expertise and knowledge and maybe even uh, people that I know within the industry. Um, as far as working in government, I've never worked in government, but I've worked with them. And the people of the city, the engineers, the planners, things like that. That's kind of what I bring, and that's why I'm standing here offering that to you. So you've kind of answered the second question, and that is, in what ways do you think you can make a positive contribution to the commission? Exactly. Like I said, I'd say right. I have a willingness and an excitement. Otherwise, I wouldn't be standing here. I want to try and make a difference in my community. And that's what I bring to the table. I bring, I bring the utility telecom experience that I have that I can help the city of Minnesota out with. Okay. Yeah. Have you had a chance at all to um, read the 2040 um, plan for the city? I have not. Are you familiar with the comprehensive planning? I, I know that cities do do that, but I had not. This was kind of a last minute thing where I saw it and I'm like, I want to go do it. And then I kind of got a nudge from my family like, hey, if you're going to do it, give it a shot. So. I probably didn't do as much homework as I should have. That, I'm sorry, um, but this is something new for me, and kind of just trying to put it out there and see right. what happens. Well, we appreciate you um, applying. Definitely, definitely. So, okay. Any questions of us? No. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. I yeah. Appreciate Thank you. It. Thank you. Uh. Yep. So good evening. Uh, as I explained before, what we're going to do is um, interview tonight during the work session. We'll kind of discuss it, debate it, and make a determination. And then we will actually do the um, resolutions and, uh, and voting on the appointments at a regular meeting coming up at 7 o'clock. So with that, we have just um, 10 questions for you. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> We have um, just just a couple <laughs> questions for you. Um, so um, describe, you can give us some background or information on yourself if you'd like, and then also describe your past experience dealing with or participating in local government. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, my name is Mike Kirkwood. I live at 5435 Cedar Point Road. I've been there now 30 years, uh, so it's been just a wonderful experience. And been enjoy to watch the city grow and change as we're there. So I live on the lake near Cedar Point. I've been an avid sailor and a uh, rail trail user and any other trails I can get to. Uh, I've been a member of the Planning Commission these past three years and I'm up for a reappointment tonight. And uh, I've also been a head election judge for Minnesota in the last five or six elections and a regular judge for one before that and election judge for two school board elections. So that's always been an interesting journey having those meetings. Uh, I've enjoyed serving as the Minnetrista representative to the Lake Minnetonka Conservation District, the governing body for the lake, and as part of that role, with the very helpful support of this mayor and this council, I was able to move the LMCD to support the installation of a quiet waters area at Cedar <coughs> Point, which was quite dangerous. Everybody I talked to in the neighborhood agreed we had to do something about it. So we got these two slow boys out there and 
it's a lot safer than it was, and people are very happy with that. So that's been, you know, an interesting community element that I was involved with. And my uh, campaign to get that quiet watered area to put in place only took 12 years. So <laughs> I started it probably even before Lisa was on that, uh, that panel. Uh, Career-wise, for over 25 years, I was an independent trainer and consultant to several Fortune 500 companies going way back. I was a social studies teacher in Buffalo, Minnesota, uh, and that fostered the idea that uh, as a community, some things uh, are better accomplished when we work together and within agreements uh, on process and policies and something we just do better together than trying to do alone. Question two. Okay. <laughs> Great. Thank you. And maybe you've sort of answered this, but in what ways do you think you can make a positive contribution to the commission? Yeah, I learned a lot in the last three years on the on the commission. I mean, I had to get it <coughs> close to the terminology. Uh, Nick also has been just a great coach and all for all of us in learning how to do that. Uh, I'm now better able, I think, to address and respond to some of the issues that come up. It requires a general working knowledge, I think, of variance rules, setbacks, procedures for approvals in individual cases, so I've got some of that rhythm. There's still more to learn at the same time. Um, I do think there's a need to be attentive to balancing the desires and concerns of the applicants uh, to maximize the property value, the return for the homeowner, while maintaining the longer-term attractiveness of the whole city and all the properties for all citizens. And you don't have to drive very far to see examples of where people haven't been paying attention to the look of the city. And it's not the city, obviously. Uh, so I enjoyed what I've learned from the commission and look forward to continuing in the role. Thank you. And Anne, you had a question? Uh, well. <laughs> you have to ask the same question to all the applicants, that's why. Okay, well, my question was, have you read the 2040 Comprehensive Plan? And we kind of know you have. <laughs> have you read the comp plan? I've started it twice. <laughs> <laughs> I've read relevant elements and I'm still hoping to get all the way through it. <laughs> that, was, that was an honest answer anyway. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's an amazing source of information. <laughs> Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sarah. Sarah, what do you think? I think that's all we have. So, good evening, Sarah. Um, so as I explained to the other um, candidates that we're um, doing the interviews now during the work session, we'll be discussing it amongst us and making a determination, um, and then it'll go to our regular meeting, which is following this one at 7 o'clock, and during that meeting, there's an agenda item to make the actual um, formal appointment. So we'll, we'll know tonight. So we have, um, we have two questions, even though I fibbed and I said we had 10 for Mike, but anyhow, um, <laughs> So there's two questions, and you can start out maybe telling us a little bit about yourself, if you would like, and then also describe your past experience dealing with or participating in local government. Well, my name is Sarah Hussein, and I've been in Minnetrust now for about 10 years. Uh, but I grew up in this area my whole life. I spent, my dad's been Bonnie for, oh, 30 years, and uh, I, I lived in other areas, too. So I've always kind of been grounded here, even though I've only been in this city for um, I work for Cargill, and I'm a project manager. So that kind of gives me some unique experience when you're, we're talking about stuff like this, because I understand projects and how they work, whether it's building a new capability in a plant, so I'm actually installing like equipment for manufacturing or managing an IT project, so I understand software, or even process design. Those are the kinds of things that I work on as a project manager at Cargill. So I just bring that up because I think it's kind of a unique experience set that um, gives me some insight into what you guys, the kinds of decisions that uh, are being made when you're considering things like a road project or other infrastructure. Um, as far as my experience in city government, I've been on the Parks Commission for a lot of years now. Um, I'm currently the chair, and I, I would say about that, I really enjoy being on the Parks Commission, and I'm really bad at parliamentary procedures. So <coughs> that's one thing that I, I definitely need to improve on a little bit, although I do try. 
Um, what I really have enjoyed the most about being on the Parks Commission, though, honestly, is the updates that I get from you guys. I like, I like hearing what's happening in our city. I like um, hearing the kinds of things that you are grappling with and the discussions that you're having. And frankly, on the Parks Commission, there's not a lot of meat on the recommendation bone, if you know what I mean. We're basically usually recommending cash and loot, or should we build a park? Those are kind of the two options. So I think uh, being on the planning commission would allow me to dive a little deeper into the subject matter of our city, and that's why I'm interested in doing it. <coughs> Was that yeah, the, the first answer? That's mm -hmm. great, yeah. Okay. Um, and then sort of on the same note, um, in what ways do you think you can make a positive contribution to the Planning Commission? I'm a really big fan of our comprehensive plan. I love that our city spent the time doing vision setting and getting um, the inputs from our community. I'm a big believer in the idea that the decisions are made by those who show up. And um, if people are going to care enough and spend the time Providing their insights to the city, I think it's wonderful that our city respects that. And I, I think I come from a background where I'm going to hopefully be able to make contributions that are creative and maybe think of, you know, a different way to skin the cat or, um, you know, just see things maybe in a different way because I have diverse, a diverse set of experiences, and that's how I think I could probably help. I feel a great deal of civic pride and some civic duty, which is how this journey all started for me. Um, the first time I stood up here and interviewed, I said, I don't care if you put me in the Parks Commission or the Planning Commission, you know, I, I just want to serve. And, and that's still true. I wouldn't step down from the Parks Commission if you chose to not put me on the Planning Commission. But I, I, like I said, I just want to be a little more involved and I have the time. So I can really <coughs> raise my hand, especially when Nick said that we weren't getting enough people to volunteer. So I'm like, all right, I guess this is time. So that's really, that's the place that I come from. And um, I just am passionate about the vision that we have for our city and keeping it, keeping our rural character. And I'm well aware of the pressures that we have that um, kind of butt up against that. And so I, I want to help contribute to creative solutions. Great, great. Um, do you want to ask the planning uh, company? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I take it that you've read the 2040 comprehensive plan somewhere along the line. I have. Okay. I have. Oh, very good. Well, I'm not going to say I've read every line of all 350 or so pages, <laughs> but I've, I've spent some time with it. Yeah. yeah. All good. I think that answers our questions, so thank you very much, and looking forward to working with you in one capacity or the other, so oh, thank you. Right. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, sir. Sarah. Are there any yeah. other? That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay, so we have Mike, Heather, Mark, and Sarah. Who well, is that? He's not here. He's not, not here. I'm saying oh. that came tonight. Oh. So um, we had Elise um, apply for parks. She's currently on parks. I think my recommendation would be just to reappoint her. Um, and then we had another applicant for parks? Uh, Kelly Phillips applied for both. Yeah, correct. So okay. Do, but um, she wasn't here tonight. She's not here tonight. Um, I would probably put her on parks. Mm -hmm. um, and the other applicant for parks um, withdrew. Right. So mm -hmm. my recommendation is, I mean, I think it goes without saying Mike came super prepared, mm -hmm. very experienced. Um, Mike should be uh, put on the planning. Um, I like Sarah's responses. She has park experience. I think moving her, I'll say, up to planning would be a good idea. Um, Heather, I think we should move her into planning. I like Mark's enthusiasm. Um, I'm a little concerned coming from California and only being here a year and a half, not knowing anything about our city. But what I'd like to do is put him on as an alternate on planning. Um, I know from experience that alternates do sit in frequently, so he would get that experience, and maybe at our next opening, he would then be set and ready to go. Um, and then we have Zach, who applied for planning. If they're still interested, maybe putting him on as an alternate. Well, aren't we missing somebody for parks? We are. So maybe we you want to put him on. We could. We, we could, could offer. Okay. I'm just suggesting. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, that no. should we? Um, he might not want to do parks. I know. Yeah. At that time. If we don't, we'd, we'd have to reach out to him and maybe bring that back at a future meeting, maybe in January. Mm -hmm. and we, we, how many do we need on planning? We need seven. Yeah, but well, I mean, we need the new ones, so we need we need how many? We need five. Seats? There's five total, right? The two alternates and the three positions. Right. Right. There's three. So. You know, the the three are the, the main ones to make a full commission. I mean, the alternates are, you know, slicing yeah. right on top of the cake, right? Yeah. So. Right. Or. Um, okay, I didn't realize we needed two alternates mm -hmm. for planning. So, so I see. We could make him an alternate. The other option I, I mentioned to um, Jasper earlier is, I wonder if either op alternate for planning would be interested in also being a park commissioner. That'd be nice. Mm -hmm. and, and, the, and unfortunately, Zach isn't here tonight. But I wonder if. If Mark would be interested in that, can we call him back in and ask him? Sure. I mean, yeah. I mean, we're, generally we haven't done that in the past. I'm not opposed to it. I'm not either. Um, Kathleen, any thoughts? No, that's fine. We can ask him and then. Do you want to ask him if can we bring him back in? Sure. Okay. Then we would have both alternates. Mm -hmm. Maybe. And a full like planning commission, and we'd have, like, we'd have a full so. park commission, I think. With yeah, one. we just need, I, yeah, because uh, clean jerk. No, because Sarah's going to come off. Yeah. Right. So. <coughs> yeah. That would do it. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. So, Mark, we really like your enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> we like your enthusiasm. We like the fact that you really want to get involved so early on. Our concern is a little bit because you don't know the city very well. So here's what we're going to ask of you, if you would be willing to do this. Um, on our planning commission, we have two alternates. And we need one more alternate. And we're thinking of appointing you as that alternate. An alternate, I kind of look at them as, as a person in waiting um, kind of training, if you will. Plus, you do sit in when um, there's not a full commission. Um, and you are a voting member. But the other thing I was going to ask, would you be interested in being a full parks commissioner? We do need another person on our parks commission. Probably not. Okay. All right. Well, then we'll probably be appointing you as an alternate to the planning. So thank you. Thank, thank you very much. much. So with that, then... Um, I think we can just repost it. For the parks. Mm -hmm. For the parks. Mm -hmm. So we really need, we actually need one commissioner and one alternate. Right. Now, is the current, there's one alternate there. Right. Is he interested in? No. <coughs> okay. So I think we should just post it and see what, what we come up with. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, what are you going to do? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There's no one else to do. Right. Um, there's one thing we've talked about, the Parks Commission, getting them more involved. Right. And I think that should be a really uh, a good strategy to get people interested in yeah. stepping stone and then um, whatever it is, whether it's event planning or whatever. So. Yeah. Okay. So I think, are we in agreement then? Yes. All right. One other thing real quick. I am in agreement. Yeah. Okay. Um, we... Uh, we have some concerns just talking that there were people interested in coming here that weren't in Trista residents, but it's not in the um, job description or whatever. Mm -hmm. Is that something we should look at making it? You should be an in Trista resident? That'd be up to city council. What we would do is just put it in city code, like the process for appointing uh, commission members for both park and planning commission, because it's, it's silent right now. So it's kind of whatever you want to do. If you want to define it, you definitely can. And we just do that via ordinance. Mm -hmm. It just was very odd. I, I think we should. Yes. Because, I mean, a guy, from, somebody from Arlington. I mean, it's like an hour's drive away. Do, do you know where Arlington is? No, There's an Arlington, Minnesota. I drove through it in August. <laughs> I did. It's, it's, it's about 45 minutes away. Yeah. Well, it's, okay. Does anyone, does anyone have any insight as to why these people apply? No. My guess is either a joke 
No, or there are too many people who apply, and or all from different places. Yeah. It's not a joke. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, but I am curious. Maybe they, if they're students and it was a requirement, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, That's an interesting perspective. Yeah. yeah. I, I've done it. Okay. They want to get involved in local government, or but sort of obviously yeah. they want to have openings in their local city. Unless they thought it was a paid position. You know, well, some a, some cities might pay their commissioners. I don't know, mm -hmm. but I, I I agree. I think we should make that um, a policy or part. I'm not part of code that you need to be a Minnetrista resident. Yeah. Yeah, I'll queue it up for um, like a work session discussion in Q1. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. Um, we'll move on to our ARPA update discussion. Madam Mayor and Council, that is me, and I promise this won't take 30 minutes. This might take <laughs> one-tenth one of that. At the time, I think there was maybe going to be a third work session item on here, so that's why I didn't. Uh, it's, it's not a long item. It's more a quick I, uh, update to see if I'm recalling everything from this late summer, spring, summer correctly, and if uh, City Council is on, on board just when, when I am um, file the reports here coming up in the first quarter or early 2023 that uh, we're uh, we're doing everything good with the uh, the federal government and I doubt they'll I know there's a lot of dollars that were distributed in ARPA and our 888,000 was sort of a, a drop in the bucket compared to the uh, so I'd have to remember what the federal government distributed tr trillion or I don't know what <laughs> it was something it was something like that wasn't it or, yeah so um but um so yeah back in in May and I just sort of summarized in this memo we had done some transfers to, to, to do those proposed amounts to the, the roads, the 345,000 water, 464, and then the cable. I think it started out at 55, and then we added to the project, to the to the Midco project, so then it ended up being, we got some additional dollars from the county, and then it ended up being 78,000. So, um, and then the other thing we did back earlier in the year is, is, is took the, uh, more of a standard allowance. So basically it just, in summary, it allow us to not have to, provide it as much documentation. It'll be a little more streamlined as far as by being able to do that. We'll just be able to say we spent it on this project, this project, and this project, and we won't have to mm -hmm. send them like uh, like with a FEMA project, like you know, dozens of pages of, uh, of invoices and stuff or whatever. So, so that was good. We did that earlier in the year. So um, I guess on the, on the bottom of page 15 there, um, the way I guess I, I would envision it is that um, the road project, we had the Jennings area, we did this year, and we've, we spent, you know, up with the contractor, the total project was about 500000 or so, you know, our little, and so I would say it would be fine for us to basically, on our next report, say we, we've spent our money in that area in roads. Um, I know we talked about spending on, on the two new wells. We guess we've done the test wells. We could report those dollar amounts already. Um, and then report the rest when we get more into the well project, which I know AE2S is giving an update tonight even as far as sort of timeline and, and things there. And then I guess our broadband project we would not have spent yet because that, according to, I know, um, you know discussions with Ali and previous discussions with council, they're going to, I think, build that all at the end of the project or mm -hmm. invoices once it's all done, and then we'll get our money from the county and we'll pay Midco, and we'll all be you know, happy that those 500 homes will have good, good broadband. I believe to see <laughs> what we're, we're hoping for there, right? So, uh, so I guess um, I'm just looking for if if, there, if it's consensus of the council. So, in that report, you know, that we'll have to file here um, by the end of April, if um, as shown above. And of April and of March. Um, I think the reporting deadline or the the period is through it's, March 30th, okay. 20, okay. 2023, and then we have a month basically to file afterwards. File. So. Um, if the way that I guess I just described that, if that's fine to basically report the uh, um, five hundred and sixty-one thousand um, mm -hmm. dollar ARPA proceeds on the next one, and then we should have the the, the remaining funds spent probably sometime during twenty twenty-three mm -hmm. later, and then we'll file those. I think I noted in the report, and I think we had discussed this earlier through the ARPA process. You know, we have until twenty twenty-four to obligate <coughs> twenty twenty-six to spend, but. In, Mm -hmm. I think we can have it spent over the next, you know, right. this year and next year and be, and be um, good with it. Um, and then I did reference that, and this was more coincidental. I wasn't trying to do anything, but it's uh, the, the single audit um, requirements mm -hmm. kick in at 750000 So um, we basically should not need to incur a single audit either for year end 2022 or 23. Um, 
based on the suggested recording, I guess, unless the auditors tell something different and can prove it or whatever, or show, show why we would need to, we should not have to go through those additional audit procedures. So okay. if there's any questions mm -hmm. or comments or suggestions or if this seems like okay to, to do. And then I think I referenced, I don't know if this would need to come back as like a consent agenda on the next meeting just to sort of adopt that by motion or if this is okay. I don't know. Um, do you have any thoughts, Jasper? Or, or? If it's agreeable amongst the council members here tonight, I mean, I think it would just be a consent agenda item. Okay. Just on the next okay. meeting. Okay. All right. Sounds good. No. Let's see how there's any other no other items questions? That people want to talk no. about. Okay. ARPA. I'm sort of good with the CARES and the ARPA, all, all well intentioned and good things, but I think, uh, or. <laughs> yeah, part of it, all of that kind of gets. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. So, and it's sort of hard sometimes with the one time money. Obviously, it's good to use, but obviously, you don't want right. to count on that forever, I guess. Right. And I don't think there's oh, any more okay. coming. So. Doing real good there, yep. So. Yep. All right. And looking forward to the um, report tonight from AE2S. So yep. we'll be forward with that. Um, yeah. No questions, so we're good to go. Um, is there a motion? So should we stay in the meeting so that we don't have to worry about um, open meeting laws? Because we have an open house at 6.30, and so should we just stay in, in meeting, maybe? And then and then adjourn right before the meeting? It's, it's, your, it's your preference. If you, you can adjourn, just, you know, obviously don't. Talk about city business. No, I was what left. I was going to do is maybe inform the people that were here for the commission appointments what what our decision was and that we'll be making no, those. That's a good idea. With, okay. Do we just want to bring them in real quick then, or do I should? What's your recommendation? It's up to you. Like let them know one by one, it, or, or what do you it, think? If you want, as a group I guess if you want to <laughs> let them know so they don't have to stay for the whole yeah, right that's regular what I was meeting. Thinking. You could give them that courtesy, and then maybe then. Okay. Well, why don't why don't we bring them in, all of them together? Okay. Why not? I mean, they're going to know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have? Uh, I mean, we're just going to say here's here's the appointments, and we don't have to say why. We just here's the appointments. Okay. okay. I mean, That's fine. and it's it's going to be public information anyway. So. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we have we have time. Yeah, we have time. <laughs> Oh, We're not running over. <laughs> really? Lost one. He's going to come back and go for the regular meeting. We'll let him know. Yeah. Okay. Oh. So we just thought, just in case you don't want to stay beyond 7 o'clock. Now, of course, you're going to stay for the open house. Anyhow. <laughs> oh. um, no, we just thought we'd let you know the three of you have been appointed. We agreed, and we will do the formal appointment at our regular meeting. So the three of you will be our new um, planning commissioners. And then um, Mark, who left, um, he will be um, one of our alternates. So, and we um, reappointed Elise to the pl um, Parks Commission and then the other individual that applied. So we're still looking for a Park Commissioner, if you know of anybody out there that's interested, and also another alter, actually an alternate for planning as well as Parks. So we're still looking for people to volunteer. So if you know neighbor, friend, whatever, let them know. So, and you can. Good. Okay. <laughs> Good. Yeah. You're all set. <laughs> so, our first uh, planning commission meeting is in January. Yep. Um, there will be the swearing in of, of the three of you and, and the alternate. And then, um, yeah, I don't know if there's. Do you do any kind of um, review of what their duties are or anything like that? We've, we've done various types of orientations right. before. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so we can okay. reach out and see what they're wanting to do and, and okay. with them as needed. Yep. All right. Yep. So that's it. So we are going to adjourn this, and at 6.30 we have an open house for John and Pam, and John is going to be absent because he's sick. But um, <laughs> so... <laughs> So with that, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. 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 Second.
so moved. Thank you, Pam. And is there a second? Second. Thank you, Anne. All those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes 4-0. So let the party begin. <laughs>